Hello and welcome to SAR Histories, where on the channel today we will be visiting the old capital of Mercia, Tamworth Castle. In Anglo-Saxon times, Tamworth was a vitally important centre at the heart of the Kingdom of Mercia. As far back as the 7th to the 9th century, Tamworth was a principal royal and administrative centre of the Mercian kings. Charters show Mercian royal families celebrated both Easter and Christmas at Tamworth regularly between 751 and 857, staying here far more than other places. It is also believed Tamworth had a major royal residence or palace. However, in 874 Tamworth was attacked and destroyed by Vikings and by 911 Tamworth had become a border town between the Danelaw and the English. In 913, Athelfled, Lady of Mercians, is known to have re-fortified Tamworth. The daughter of King Alfred the Great, she became known as the Lady of the Mercians. Her death in 918 in Tamworth resulted in Mercia being merged into Wessex. After the Norman invasion of 1066, Tamworth was given to Robert le Dispenser, a skilled and influential nobleman for William the Conqueror. It is likely the original Mott and Bailey Castle was built around 1070. But when Robert died without children, the castle and property passed to his brother's daughter. Tamworth Castle was inherited by Robert Marmion in 1100 through his marriage to Matilda, daughter of Urs de Abitot. For nearly two centuries, the Marmion family held Tamworth Castle from 1100 to 1294. There were six lords, all but the last were named Robert. In 1291, the castle passed into the Freeville family until 1423 when it passed into the Ferrers family, who later sold the castle and it opened as a museum in 1899. Dating from the 1200s, this room is displayed as a dining room in the Tudor period. The suite of rooms in here were part of the private chambers of the castle's noble family. In medieval times, the family would have eaten in the Great Hall with everyone from the main household. But by Tudor times, families would withdraw to a private dining area. This room is believed to have acted as a staging post for food being brought in from the kitchen below, outside, before being served into the private dining area next door. The blocked up archway in this room is thought to have opened onto a covered stairwell which would have led down to the kitchen. This would make the kitchen very well placed between the north and south wings of the castle to serve two sets of dining rooms, one for visiting guests and one for the family based in the south wing. The day parlour, a private withdrawing or living room, is furnished as it may have looked during Tudor times. People would gather here before dining to relax and socialise. It is part of a suite of three lavish rooms used as apartments for royal visits or personal guests of the family. King James I visited the castle three times and is believed to have stayed in these suite of rooms. In 1619, 1621 and again in 1624. It is thought that this may have been his bedchamber with his private reception and dining area next door. The 
medieval north wing appears to have only ever been two stories high, with a third story added with garret rooms by the late 16th century. There were four garret rooms in total, which were enlarged by adding patterned brick gables in anticipation of a visit of King Charles I. The area now features an exhibition displaying unique objects from the Staffordshire Hoard. This dazzling collection of Anglo-Saxon metalwork was discovered by a metal detectorist in a field about 9 miles from Tamworth in 2009. Saxon society was based on a community of warring tribes who battled to gain territory and dominance. The Kingdom of Mercia was established in the 6th century, but by AD 700 it had become the most powerful kingdom in England. Tamworth was an important place. It was known as Tomton, meaning settlement by the Tame. This exhibition explores the importance of the Saxon settlement at Tamworth and the important Mercian kings who used power, battle and influence to unite the kingdoms across England. Originally this room was used as a solar but today it is displayed as it might have looked in Stuart times. It served as the lady of the household's chamber, with a four-poster bed, somewhere for her to write her letters, a Bible box and stool to allow her to read scripture, a trunk for her possessions and a small table for eating. This room was known as the High Chamber under the household of John Ferris V in 1680. Documents from that date reveal that it was a bedroom and was furnished with a rug, a sideboard, a table, a commode and a looking glass. It is uncertain what the room was used for during the medieval times, but it would have been directly above the solar, the private rooms of the Lord and his family. Within earshot of the lady's chamber, this room would have been for the personal servant of the lady of the castle. Originally, the room was divided by a timber frame partition, thereby giving a private chamber at the back and through a corridor at the front, allowing staff to easily pass around the castle's buildings. This room is displayed as it may have looked in the time of the first Marquess, 4th Viscount George Townshend. This was his personal room where he could study and keep track of his estate and business interests. George inherited the castle from his father and spent a lot of money on improvements, thereby getting himself into substantial debt. The Townshend family originate from Rhynham in Norfolk, with their family still holding that estate to this day. In order to maintain Rhynham, much of the Townshend estates were sold off, so in 1821 the castle was sold to a London auctioneer. In 1831, the Townshend repurchased the castle for a final time. It was then rented out to a series of tenants. The nursery was once a private bedroom back in Stuart times. This room was furnished with a bed and had a small toilet off the main room beyond the red curtain. Today, it is displayed as a nursery as it may have been used when the Cook family lived here 
from 1867 to 1897. In 1680, this was the private chamber of Anne Colton, wife of John Ferris, but today it is referred to as Cook's bedroom, although it is known that Thomas Cook slept in the day parlour over in the north wing of the castle. This is a grand suite and is most likely to have been occupied by some of Cook's children. Most importantly, it has an ensuite bathroom, sensibly situated above the castle's own water well. The oak room is the first of two panelled rooms built by the Ferris family as their new apartment. In 1680 this was known as the new dining room but is displayed as it might have looked in the time of George Marcus Townsend in the 18th century. The main feature of this room is the huge elaborately carved chimney piece. It is made from Irish bog oak where the wood has been buried in a peat bog for several hundred years giving it its distinctive black colour. The withdrawing room was the domain of the lady of the household where she and any female guests would retire after an evening dinner. It was the main reception room for guests both day and night, a room to withdraw to for some privacy. What you see today is based on photographs of how the room was furnished when the Cook family lived here. Victorian rooms were often cluttered with lots of furniture, photographs, paintings and heavy curtains, tablecloths and upholstery, making them very dark. The Great Hall was built around 1440 and is one of the most impressive structures of its kind in England, being a rare example of a tie beam roof. The Great Hall was an important part of medieval life. It was a multifunctional room used by everyone who lived in the castle. It was where the household would dine together or receive guests and at night it was where some would sleep. This hall is believed to have replaced an early one, possibly made of stone. It has been inserted between the ranges of buildings on the north and south sides of the castle. For the lord of the castle, it was essential that he was seen dining and entertaining in public thereby reminding everyone of his importance. The dungeon is situated at the base of the Norman Tower. This was the safest place in the castle, probably used as a refuge in times of attack, most likely a secure storeroom rather than a dungeon, but it is possible that some prisoners were held here during times of siege. This passageway was built as a walkway between the inner and outer walls of the Shell Keep. It provided a safe route for soldiers to reach the defensive arrow loops on the south side of the castle. Tamworth Castle has a long and exciting history and is a must for any who enjoy history. Each room has their own historic story and it is easy to spend a couple of hours exploring. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Until then, goodbye.